Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. There is no integer n such that 3 divides n squared plus 1. Now, to prove this, we are going to be using modular arithmetic. So let's recall the following definition. Let a and b be integers, and let n be a positive integer. We say a is congruent to b mod n if n divides a minus b, right? Or another way of putting it is a and b defer by a multiple of n. Now, this relation is an equivalence relation. That is, given any integer a, a is congruent to a mod n. If a is congruent to b mod n, then b is congruent to a mod n. And if a is congruent to b mod n and b is congruent to c mod n, then a is congruent to c mod n. Now some other properties that this relation satisfies is compatibility with addition and multiplication. And what I mean by that is the following. If a is congruent to b mod n and c is congruent to d mod n, then a plus c is congruent to b plus d mod n, and a times c is congruent to b times d mod n. Now another property that we're going to be using is the following. Given a is an integer and m is a positive integer, then there is a unique integer b such that b lies between 0 and m minus 1, and a is congruent to b mod m. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. We're trying to prove there is no integer n such that 3 divides n squared plus 1. So to prove that, we are going to prove for every integer n, 3 does not divide n squared plus 1. So to start on the proof, we will give ourselves an arbitrary integer n. And from here, we proceed to show 3 does not divide n squared plus 1. Now, we're going to be working with mod 3. So, let's take this statement right here, and we're going to replace m with 3. In that case, that tells us given any integer a, there is unique integer b, such that b lies between 0 and 2, and a is congruent to b mod 3. Okay, so applying this result to n, well then, there is unique integer b between 0 and 2, such that n is congruent to b mod 3. So since b lies between 0 and 2, this tells us that n is congruent to 0, 1, or 2, mod 3. And so from here, given n is congruent to 0, 1, or 2, what is n squared congruent to? Well, we're going to be using compatibility of multiplication to figure that out. So, if n is congruent to 0, well, then according to compatibility with multiplication, it follows that n squared is congruent to 0 times 0. 0 times 0 is just 0, so this tells us n squared is congruent to 0 in this case. In the case where n is congruent to 1, then n squared is congruent to 1 times 1. 1 times 1 is equal to 1, so this shows n squared is congruent to 1. Now let's consider the case n is congruent to 2. Well, then in that case, n squared is congruent to 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. But in mod 3, 4 is congruent to 1. Because 4 and 1 differ by a multiple of 3. Right, so 4 is congruent to 1 in mod 3. So this shows that n squared is congruent to 1 in that case. So no matter what case we have, we see that n squared is going to be congruent to 0 or 1. So n squared is congruent to 0 or 1 in mod 3. So now let's use this information 
to figure out what is n squared plus 1 congruent to in mod 3. To figure out that, we're going to be using compatibility with addition. Remember, this is an equivalence relation. So we know 1 is congruent to 1 in mod 3. So, in the case where n squared is congruent to 0, well, since 1 is congruent to 1, compatibility with addition tells us that n squared plus 1 is congruent to 0 plus 1. 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. So this shows n squared plus 1 is congruent to 1 in this case. Now, if n squared is congruent to 1, well, then compatibility with addition tells us n squared plus 1 is congruent to 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So n squared plus 1 is congruent to 2 in this case. So no matter which case we have, we see that n squared plus 1 is congruent to 1 or 2. But since n squared plus 1 is congruent to 1 or 2 when working in mod 3, well, that tells us n squared plus 1 cannot be congruent to 0 in mod 3. Right? That comes from this statement right here. So what happens if we assume n squared plus 1 is congruent to 0 in mod 3? Well, then let's split this up into two cases. If n squared plus 1 is congruent to 1, well, then we have n squared plus 1 congruent to both 1 and 0. Well, then the uniqueness portion of this statement would imply 1 is equal to 0, which is false. Similarly, if we consider the case n squared plus 1 is congruent to 2, well then, since we also would have n squared plus 1 congruent to 0, that implies 2 is equal to 0 by the uniqueness portion of this statement. So yeah, we reach a contradiction. So yeah, assuming that n squared plus 1 is congruent to 0 leads us to a contradiction. So we cannot have n squared plus 1 congruent to 0. So n squared plus 1 is not congruent to 0 when working in mod 3. And so by definition of congruence mod n, that tells us that 3 does not divide n squared plus 1 minus 0. Or in other words, 3 does not divide n squared plus 1. And so this shows if n is an arbitrary integer, then 3 does not divide n squared plus 1. In other words, we've proven that there is no integer n such that 3 divides n squared plus 1. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.